Hey, what up guys? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. Today we'll be covering an important concept where I'll show you how you can get input from the user and then display it back onto the screen. So the widget of the day is called text field and let me show you real quick how you can implement it by jumping into the code. So I've got here in my main function running my app, which is running my homepage, which is a stateful widget. And inside I've just got here blank scaffold. So in the body, let's just create a basic column. And in the children, we're going to create a text field. And if you look inside the text field, there's a lot of options here that we can play around with. But firstly, in the decoration, let's create a border. So I'm just going to use this outline input border. And it looks like it's scrunched up at the very top. So let's go to the column and just change this axis alignment to be in the center. Awesome, let's just add a little bit of padding to this column. And there's our basic text view. Now there's so many properties to specify here, but one of the main ones you should do is this hint text, which is just a string. So this is going to be a bit of text that's grayed out. So you can see, for example, if I say what's on your mind, it lets the user know what they should be typing in this text field. Now, just by default, if I click onto this right now, I am actually able to type on my physical keyboard on my computer. But obviously, since this is an iPhone, uh, we want the software keyboard to show up on the screen. On Android, I'm pretty sure that the keyboard shows up by default. But if not, like this iPhone, if you go to the options at the top, you can see in the keyboard option, it's got it ticked for the hardware keyboard. So I'm just going to tick that off and hopefully now my software keyboard shows up and there we go cool so if you're working with an iphone simulator just keep this in mind okay so now in this text field we can start typing in but we're also going to need to store this into a variable and get access to this information right so the first thing is we're going to create something called a text editing controller and basically what this does is this controller keeps track of what the user is typing in the text field so if you look under the text field, there should be an option to specify the controller and this is how we can link it together. Awesome. Now you can also specify some prefix icons, which is going to be at the beginning of the text. But I just want to show you a suffix icon as an example. And in the icon button, the icon that I want is the clear icon. And so when this icon is pressed, we want the text field to be cleared. So you can see the little X icon there. So if the user typed in a bunch of letters and if they click on the X, we want it to be cleared. So to do that, let's get our text editing controller and just clear it. Cool, so let's test this out. And if I type some stuff in and click X, then everything becomes clear inside. Awesome. Now underneath this text field, let's create a little button for the user to Hit. So I'm going to create here a material button and in the child, let's say tweet or just post and let's just decorate this up a little bit. Cool. Looks like everything's aligned to the center. So I'm just going to go to the column and just align the cross axis alignment to the end. There we go. Awesome. So now that we have this button that the user can click, once the user types in some information and they hit post, let's display it onto the screen as well. So let's just add some comments here. So at the very top, I want to display some text. In the middle, we have our text field input. And then on the bottom, we have our button. So if I just add a expanded container on the top, and just to show you with a color, that's the space I'm filling up. And so in the child, I want to just center a text widget saying hello but instead of hello i want to display what the user typed in so i'm gonna to have to store this information into a variable so let's create here a string and let's just call it user post and for now let's just give it a blank string and so instead of saying a fixed string hello we can now put in the user post and then now once the user taps the button in this on press function we want to update the text into our variable so let's go user post is equal to text controller and we want the text and of course we should actually put this in a set state so that the screen can update awesome let's try this out so if i say hello and i post it then we can now display the user text 
Awesome. And then of course you can come back to the text widget at the top and customize it and decorate it to your liking. And that's it. Now, regardless of what app you're making, most likely you're going to need to get some input from the user. So this is how you do that. And hopefully that was easy to understand. Play around with it and let me know if you guys have any questions. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters.